Illegal elbows. Elbow techniques. This is the elbow. An elbow from here. I'll throw the elbow. Yeah, the illegal elbow. Welcome back, just like that! Hey, welcome to Illegal Elbow MMA and more. It's Brian from LegalElbow.com and Illegal Elbow on Twitter. And this is Dan from MMA Aftermath on Facebook and Twitter. So, Dan, I know when it comes to the last night's card, basically. Uh, Handovers, Belfort. I know you're not real happy with it. I wasn't as unhappy as you were. You know, I uh, obviously we can get right into it, basically. But I was just kind of thinking, you know, I wasn't as unhappy about the card. But I hear a lot of what you're saying about the the stoppage. If you want to run over what you thought about the Tree Hill stoppage, well, the Tree Hill stoppage one was, you know, it's you know we talk about it. It's in the sport of MMA, you're going to have a lot of once, I guess not a lot, uh, in case you're talking about Herb Dean, you're probably going to get a lot of fucking bullshit. Mazzagati, you're going to get a lot of bullshit. <laughs> but it wasn't a big a big enough fight for everybody to get, you know, it's a prelim, for everybody to get up in arms about it and get really pissed off. Like, maybe they probably should have. Like I said, we didn't see the post fight of what Dana said about it. But it was to me, it was an early stoppage. He was on like his his side. It looked to me like he was trying to flop over a little bit. It looked awkward, albeit, but he wasn't out. He was still coherent. It was a fuck up by the ref. Like I say in in MMA, you're going to have these sometimes. You're going to have a situation where the ref predetermines a fight when it you know really shouldn't have been stopped. And I would have to say he should have gave and fucking Ken Flo touched on it, which fucking Ken Flo and the fucking East Edwards, man, they, they need to stop that shit because it's, it's cringeworthy commentating. But it, uh, he had a point, Ken Flo had a point where you got to give something like that a little more time before you just bull rush in and stop it. You know, you got to give this guy either time to recover or time that you know that he's officially out of it. That was a gray area where he should have just fucking waited, dude. It's uh, it's frustrating seeing stuff like that because, I mean, let's say you, he was turning to his right, which would have, which everybody knows, you turn to your right in a choke like that, that kind of like like Weta did. Uh, yeah, it frees you from the choke basically, which I, I don't remember right offhand what 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 Guida did, but uh, no, he turned the wrong way. Is what you know? Oh, he turned right into the choke. Yeah. <laughs> Turned into the choke, which if Clay Goleta would have just stayed pat and and bided his time on the original fucking choke attempt, he probably could have got out of it. But I don't know, man. What's Clay? Well, different chokes too. I mean, one's yeah. a rear naked, one's a, a yeah, exactly. Thing, but I mean, but, I mean uh, Trujillo was going to his left, I should say, not his right. Um, which puts him in like the elbow area of the choke to where you can breathe. You know what I mean? Your air, your airways are open again, and that's a known way to get out of those kind of chokes, or at least keep yourself breathing so you can do something further. But I think he was headed that way, and I think that's why he was so damn pissed because he was almost to where he could start breathing again. But he he kind of started to look like he was panicking. His legs were moving a little bit. He was kind of moving, fidgety, kind of weird. So I. I think the ref mistook him, you know, fidgeting, trying to move around and, and, and get himself safe in a safe zone for just panic. You know, the guy mistook it for panic, and that's why I think he did the stoppage, which, yeah, we, we, a lot of people probably see, oh, a good stoppage. You know, a lot of people probably don't. I mean, obviously, but um, overall, I didn't think it was too bad of a card. I mean, yeah, um, I was I was just basically bitching about, you know, it. it you there know, is some got, la- a lot of lackluster a, to it. You mix in the lackluster uh, Fabio Maldonado. You li- you mix in the uh, early ending of Clay Guida and the fucking extended freaking interviews that didn't need to happen. And the Trujillo, the Abel Trujillo early stoppage. We had uh, fucking, you know, it's 
And then at the end, you had fucking Dan Henderson. You know, didn't I don't know if he didn't show up, but you know, I don't know. It's just it's disappointing because we finally got a fucking knockout that I wanted, and that was uh you know Almeida. Almeida was the fighter of the card, man. The fighter yeah. of the night, man. Yeah, it just Almeida, uh, just his last, you know, um, how many fucking performances has just shown us that this guy and Brian was talking about before we started the show. Fucking, this guy's gonna be a superstar, man. He's gonna yeah. be a fucking star in the UFC. Fucking He's a young up and comer, twenty and zero. Damn. This guy was fucking. It was, and it was like a, a the Magomedov and the. Almeida, it came down to once these guys settled in on their fucking game plan and their striking game, it wasn't about if, it was about when, a matter of time, and they both uh, showed some good shit, and like you said, fucking Almeida, fucking fighter of the night, man, just Shoot a box, stole baby. the night. Yep. Shoot a box. That's that says a lot right there. But uh, sixteen knockouts, three submissions, one decision to his. To his and win. Uh, you know we're gonna just just bounce around this card a little bit. Fucking Oliveira against Holloman, dude. You know Oliveira, the cowboy, coming in just fucking uh, throwing hands, dude. Yeah, throwing hands, which which a lot of people say, hey man, this guy, yeah, look at him. But Oliveira, man, you better watch your shit, man, because you were a little sloppy. Okay, you you had some slap on that shit. So, you know. I Peter. thought Holman would do a little bit better, man. Yeah. Ugh, but, yeah it didn't yeah. look good, man. It's like I, I'm not really sure what's going on with this guy. I want to take a quick look at him real quick here. But, yeah, three losses on a row in UFC. I mean, he's – right now he is two and four in UFC. This this might be walking papers, man. It might be. Yeah. And the way they're cutting people right now, you got a good chance of getting your walking papers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two, two and four. Out of his last, out of his six fights altogether. Third yeah. round fucking TKO performance of the night for uh, an Oliveira, which, you know, give him props. You know, he beat down his opponent and finally fucking struck gold. But if you want to, you know, say, hey, you're going to go against some of these top tier guys, I don't know, man. You're going to have to crisp up your jabs. Because at the end of a lot of your combos, you know, you you kind of fell into your guy. You looked a little sloppy. You got a lot of reach. But like I said, you got a crisp up. And after you're done throwing, I think he, against a better striker, he needs to go into a, a defensive mode, you know. So you know, he's going to have to watch that shit, dude. A little sloppy. but Yeah. yeah good win, though. And I got to give yeah, him that. Good, good win. Good, good win. Man, just like you were saying, skipping around a little bit, man. Gilbert Burns was all excited till he got till he till he met uh, Magomedov. I'll tell you that, because his last win in UFC, he was all excited about that. Big ups and, and just riding a high horse, man. But it's I'll tell you what, he met a he met a monster. Yeah, he met a roadblock man. for sure. Huge roadblock, man. Magomedov looked crisp. Just, I mean, it was just beautiful, man. Awesome and, performance. And you know, you could have probably gave Gilbert Burns that first round, maybe, you know, with some of the takedowns and stuff. Mm. Uh, you know, pressing the issue, but that's what we go back in this overall card. When you see the overall fucking wrestling guys that that base themselves on the wrestling, like against a, um, you know, um, Texera, yeah, a Texera, like coming was, against the Texera, uh, gas himself out, man. Texera played a great game, man. A Burns and maybe even a Maldonado versus Anderson. If Maldonado could have fucking actually. Threw some hands, which I don't know what the fuck he was waiting for. He could have fucking yeah. took some advantage of that, dude. Yeah. But these wrestling guys have to fucking realize that if you're going to do the 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 takedown in the first round and you're going to expend all that energy, you got to make you have to make it worthwhile. You have to get your opponent down and you have to administer some punishment, or it's all for naught. Yeah. Because in a Texera and a Burns and a Magomedov. You fucking gassed out in the first, and your opponents fucking picked you apart. Magomedov came in here and fucking just annihilated this guy. Fucking stand up. And I didn't know, you know, I was like, you know, there was a couple of times in the second round, I was like, man, dude, fucking Burns might be going down here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but but give him some props. He stayed in with heart and 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 gutted it out. But it was it was done, man. Fucking Magomedov. Uh, Megamedov just fucking imposed his will in the striking game, bro. Yeah, it was nice, man. It was very nice. 
You know, and that thing, too, you know, basically going over this fight before we move on to the main event. Well, what's the main event? I mean, it's not really much we can really say about it, man. It's just, it was just over too quick, man, really. But uh, Glover Texture, just like, like I said, man, played a great game, you know, with the Pat Cummins. And like you said before we got started, man, Pat Cummins, it's like, dude, you got to up the striking here. What's going on with the striking? It's like. The striking, striking de- and the striking defense. defense. Yeah, I mean, yeah, stereo. You got stereo Ace people is getting punished in these last. Yeah, two yeah, big time, and it's and it's nasty. And you mentioned that he was um, looking a little bit second tier, and I'm starting to agree with that. It's kind of like you know, if you don't get the takedown, you're lost. You're not lost. I shouldn't say lost, but you're in trouble. You know, because it's, this this stand up is good. He does have knockout power. But, I mean, you're in over the uh, Texture. Much more... Uh, uh, versed. Yeah, well, much more well-versed, much more uh, experienced guy. You know what I mean? And he's up his wrestling game as of, you know, his last three fights or so. You know, his wrestling game's looked a lot better. His defense has looked a lot better. And, and, and not only that... Notch. And not only that, as Texture is fucking... He's, he's not blowing his fucking wide in the first round. He is... Standing back and fucking taking his time and working his game plan. Yeah. Now I'm not the biggest Tech Sheriff fan, but I got to give the guy fucking props, man. Oh yeah, we'll give the props where they're due, man, for sure. You know, it's I'm not a big fan of him either, but I'm more a fan than I used to be. You know, I'm kind of letting the whole gun gun control thing slide a little. Yeah, bit. yeah, but but Pat Cummings, uh, sorry, dude, you, you couldn't make it out of the second round because harken back. Your fucking striking defense is absolutely atrocious, dude. You block absolutely zero. If you go back, you block fucking zero. If you're going to block zero against a guy like fucking Glover Textura, you are going to get it stuck. Not a guy like Glover Textura in in talent and ranked top ten guys like a Glover Textura, you are going to get a stoppage or a knockout every fucking time, dude. If you can't impose your will and keep somebody down on the ground and impose your will on the ground upon them because you got him down. Congratulations. He got right the fuck back up. He got right yeah. the fuck back up, and you couldn't do anything about that. And then you gassed yourself out because you fucking kept trying the same damn thing that didn't work. It's like the definition of insanity. It's like you know, you keep trying shit. You're going to have to. I don't know if it's changing game plans or you've hit a you've hit your plateau, or you know, find a new camp. But it has to all be. You already have the wrestling base, dude. The the wrestling base is there. Bam, we got it. But the thing is, you to fight in this fucking division, you have to have some semblance of a striking uh, offense and defense, and you have none. You so, know what? I could say this, man. If he spends more, because he is right now with Rain MMA slash Kings MMA. So I think what he is doing, because I know he's new at Kings MMA, Kings MMA. I know he's not. He hasn't been there a while. And if he has, it's a complete failure. But I mean, they're bringing out some of the best in in a, a ton of fighters. Not a ton, but I mean, you know, a lot of fighters right now. You know what I mean? They got a lot of younger fighters and, and newer fighters in there too. But a Kings MMA. I mean, come on. You're talking about. Uh, lightweight champion the heavyweight champion and there's a lot of other fighters in there that are doing damn good so i, I know he hasn't been in there that long because we I, we just yeah he's still a young he's still relatively new you know but it's like you haven't the plateau we've seen if you want to harken back we've seen a few guys and i probably i want to even put it like a bobby bobby lashley kind of uh uh guy in there where you got Big time wrestling where you can take guys down, but you never ever got got the fucking the stand up game down. You know, yeah, never really got that down. And I don't know if he's still there because just the night before he got a knockout knockout win, ground and pound, just yeah. you know the same ground and pound against James Thompson. Yeah. Which not saying he wasn't doing bad. I mean, he dropped James Thompson, which James Thompson's these days is is a pretty droppable dude when he's in there with a with a power shot guy. You know, James James Thompson's a good, good, pretty good, solid vet. Yeah. But per- you know, perfect example of a fucking you know a wrestler that is fucking dominating wrestler ground and pound whatever, but couldn't right. really transition over to the striking game is Brock Lesnar. If Brock Lesnar ever fucking learned, like if Brock Lesnar would have been like, 
you know, hey, leaps and bounds better in striking, and he was just fucking learning all the time, and he was getting better. Brock Lesnar would have probably made some fucking strides in the UFC. Yeah, you know, but he got into he got in there with some badass strikers, and look what happened. Yeah, I think he had a camp, a training camp of more yes men than more. Yeah, I'll tell you what to do. Kind of like JDS was. Yep. Yeah, Uh, and it's just you know, hey man, you you got to have the right people. You hit a wall. You hit a yeah. wall when you you hit a wall when you're when you're dealing with that kind of shit. You There's don't progress. In the fucking ceiling, yeah. There's no progression. We see a TJ Jellishaw wanting to progress, leaving his camp. You know, guys wanting to get better, but I'm not. You know, I'm not putting. I'm getting too far off, but I'm just saying, guys want to get better. Patrick Cummings, dude. You know, we're pulling for you, man, but you gotta fuck. You got to do it, man. You got to get better at the stand up. Yeah, King's it's, MMA, dude. Get some one on one time with uh, Cordero, man. Big time. We Don't fucking do a damn thing on the ground, dude. Uh-uh. Don't do any fucking wrestling. You already have that fucking down pat. This is all stand up time for him, dude. Yeah. And, and, get and, your head movement going. Get your movie yep, yep, strikes going. Yep. Yep. yep because you with know. some of these heavy punchers, man, your face is just not going to last. But no. uh, moving on to the far- main event, dude. You know, major hype coming into this, the TRT match of the fucking century. No, but um, <laughs> it's Dan Henderson versus Vitor Belfort, both, you know, touted fucking veterans, legends, Hall of Famers, um, going at it again. You know, I had Dan Henderson in this one because of what I've seen from Be- uh, Vitor Belfort, you know, in his sure last match. Do you remember who um, I had? I think we kind of went with Dan Henderson because we were both leaning off of the 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 oh, Vitor Belfour fight. losing against Weidman, looking shitty in the jiu-jitsu, yeah, you know, and then yeah. a Dan Henderson coming off of a nice victory, you know. So I think that had us all fucking hyped up for Dan Henderson coming in as an underdog. Fucking Vitor Belfour landing a patented fucking kick to the temple ended all that nonsense. Yeah, just uh, you know, a la. Uh... Luke Rockhold fight, you know what I mean? It's the same way he ended that one, too. So yep. it's, you know, and I mean, I'm not going to get all, you know, high and mighty behind a Vitor Belfort, but he looked a lot better than I thought he was going to look. And I think he looked bad in the Weidman fight, either. He's coming off the Weidman loss. I thought he looked better than Chris in stand-up. Yeah, until he got, yeah, until he, yeah. and you're right about that. And I and I didn't take that enough into factor, because until he got under the ground, he looked crisp, he looked good, and, and, and that's almost what made... Weidman take him to the ground because Weidman maybe had a little bit of problems on the stand-up with a, a quick Vitor Belfort. So, you know, yeah. man, he fucking was impressive, bro. And he was quick. And that fucking kick. And I'm, I'm sorry. Hendo fans, Hendo was done, dude. Hendo, Hendo was in survivor mode. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, yeah, he would have. they would have went down, folded lawn chair, done. Give props to Hendo for taking that kick. But after that kick, he was worthless, dude. It was the end. Yeah. And, I mean, it was just, uh, like you said, survival mode. And it was just, you know, a matter of time. How many more shots does he have to take while he's on the ground? And, and I mean, for a 38-year-old Vitor Belfort, man, it's I, – I, I'm not – like I said, I'm not, I'm not really betting on him t- making another title run No, here, but it's an but... infusion and a breath of fresh air, you know, of yeah, you yeah, know, him went in front of the home crowd, you know. Yeah, he looked good, man. I thought he looked really good. So, you know, it's not a uh, TRT puffed up, shredded Vitor Belfort, but he's still performing well. So, and I like to see that. You know what I mean? I like to see guys coming in true, you know what I mean? True, not, not uh, no performance enhancing, you know, bullshit. And they're performing you know, at their best. So, and um, you know, before, what do you think of Dan Henderson, man? Really, what do you, you Dan Henderson? I think it's Overson. I, think it's Overson no, Henderson? because you know, <laughs> it's for forty-five years old. I, I, you know, I don't, I didn't, I don't see Dan Henderson um, retiring in Brazil. You know, it's like if it was America, maybe he could have done it. But I think I, we still got another fight. And Dan Henderson, and if and if UFC's smart, you know, I I don't want to say smart, but if you want to see Dan, Dan Henderson go out and say, "Hey, Dan Henderson, you know, we're going to put you against somebody tough," 
you know, and just say, hey, it's two in a row. It's time for you to go, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Or they can just keep him around because Dan Henderson is a big draw. He's a big fucking draw, dude. And then until Dan Henderson, in my opinion, you know, loses two, three in a row, I think we're going to see a Dan Henderson just because, you know, it's, it's well, he, lo- he didn't lose against the scrub, dude. You know, really. Right. Peter right. Belfort is fucking ranked number four. So it's like. Yeah, he right. lost, but before that, it was he had an impressive victory. So, I, Dan Henderson goes on, in my opinion. You know, what do you think about uh, Hendo versus? Because they're both in the same weight class now. Because mm-hmm. Machida's been down there a while. What do you think of uh, Machida versus Hendo? Machida's coming impressive. off back to back losses, two back to back losses. So, it's I think, it's, I think it's almost like it's almost you bringing this up. I think we could almost call it because it's perfect. And it's it's maybe end of January, beginning of February kind of fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Throw it in there. Fucking it's a little it's a juicy fucking matchup. You know, Machida, where are you at? Uh Dan Henderson, you still there? Or Yeah, you gatekeeping or what what's going on here, yeah, man? Are you are you yeah, we just we're, we're hanging hanging around just for fucking uh uh draw sake. You know, because I think Dan Henderson could knock out a Leona Machida. He's certain, obviously, certainly got the power. But I mean, you know, it would be really hard to to land an H bomb on Machida, though. It'll be perfect I'm timing. It'd have to be some kind of perfect timing. But he could probably out wrestle a Machida. Obvious, obviously, out wrestle a Machida. But I just see you know? if it did go down, I would see a Machida playing a Machida type game plan where he's waiting for a Dan Henderson to, and a frustrated Dan Henderson to. You know, rush over and attack a Machida, who's waiting for you to attack and countering your your attacks. You yeah. know, and that's and, and we've gotten frustrated with Machida in the past for doing that. You know, and maybe changing up, being a little more aggressive. But this would be a perfect uh, fight for Machida to to do a Machida game plan. So, yeah. that's that would be my think, opinion on it. I think when you're looking at guys 37, 38, 39, you know. Getting up in age like that, you should make some interesting fights for them guys rather yes. than title running fights. You know what I mean? Make and not only team. title running fights, but not shit can fights either. Let's see where these guys are at. You know? Yeah, yeah. See where they're at, but put them in the same class. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You know, like like we've mentioned in the past. You know, we'll duck out of here after this, but uh, like you've mentioned in the past, like a like a, almost like a unspoken senior league. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yep. You we you know you, you don't have to put a there, title on you know? it, but right. that's matching up yeah. at you got the just grizzled champ ex-champion vets you yeah. know and they're both ex-champions it would be a cool and, and, uh, and let's say hey they're fucking fighting each other and they're fucking battling they're doing good and they're winning one guy's doing good and he's going through this this battle of the fucking legends and he he pops out and on a you know top eight to top four like a vitor because vitor yeah oh is Vitor ever going to get another shot? He, he might. He might. He's at four right now, and he just won. Right. So, right. you know, it's – Vitor Belfort is that. a big draw. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it was a perfect fight for Vitor Belfort for the simple fact that Vitor Belfort came out with a game plan and said, this is not even going to get to the point where it gets to the ground, really. Okay. You know, yeah, when you look at the body of work with Vitor Belfort, too. It's, you know, beating a Dan Anderson – after the loss to Chris Weidman, and then we got the TRT run here going. But, you know, you talk Vitor. about Dan, Dan Henderson, you know, in 2013, Luke Rockhold, Michael Bisping, you know, losing to a John Jones before that. We're going back to 2012. They're, they have set up fucking Vitor Belfort perfectly to where Vitor Belfort has won his non, non-titled non matches yeah. until he gets to the title match. Vitor Belfort has, in the past three, four years, has been in a lot of title matches, dude. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And yeah. he only loses in those, really. So, Right. And he's, uh, we look at it now, he is 7-3 and three in his last 10. So it, It's, you know, and it's, he's getting up in years. He's get, He's off the TRT. But besides the mistake from a Chris Weidman getting taken down and not showing much in the jiu-jitsu range... When he's standing up, he's fucking dangerous. Vitor yeah. Belfort, up in there, up in age, but still a threat, still a possibility. Defy yeah. for the title. 
So people will be watching that, and uh, we'll be watching it closely on the Illegal Elbow. But moving on, uh, before we get to the uh, Ronda Rousey UFC 193 card, I just want to touch on this because it's, you know, we've talked about Bellator making waves, dude. You know, we've, you know, we got Tito, we got Shamrock, we got Kimbo. Okay, we got all these guys that they're, they're getting in there. Hey, they're not the best fucking fighters in the world, but it's a draw. Okay, people are going to tune in to see it, Kimbo. But now we have some old has-been retreads. Do you think that post is even real? I don't know, but I've seen it. I, yeah, lot I have to wonder if it's a different joke, places. But yeah, hey. that is the fucking. It's Kimbo versus some fucking da da fucking six thousand dude, uh, some other internet sensation fucking street fighter dude again, and and then we have Ken Shamrock against Hoist Gracie, which yeah we, Belfort bought brought Hoist Gracie in as a um, it was an ambassador, was it? You said Belfort. You mean Bellator? I mean Bellator. But uh, was it Bellator that brought Hoist Gracie in to um, be an ambassador? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. and now it, we have him fighting a Ken Shamrock. It may be a fluke. I think but it is, man. In, I think it is. in Bellator's scheme of things, it would make sense. You know what I'm saying? You know what we really need to watch for in this fight? Is Ken Shamrock hitting his fucking back with a quickness. Because yeah. I, I'm, I'm already going to say it right now. I question his last fight with Kimbo, and I go all the way back and question his fight against. Um, no, no fault of. Uh, damn it! What's his name? He's math teacher, and he, well, he won the championship off Ken. I thought, but uh, um, damn it! He looks like uh, Jim Carrey. Oh, yep. You know what I'm talking about, oh. man. He recently retired. Yep. Uh, retired probably within the last last few months. But, Is that um, the psycho, American psycho? No, no, no. It's, uh, uh, damn it, man. I know what you're talking about. Everybody knows who you're talking about. But but that be, we don't want to get stuck on that. Um, well, right, but some people might not know, you know, just by yeah. math teacher or whatnot. But I think he draw. I think Ken, Ken Shamrock just hit the deck real easy in that fight. And it's, yeah, well, I, a lot of people the said the Kimbo fight with my tongue. Yeah, the Kimbo fight and the fucking Shamrock fight was fucking it was predetermined, you know, which I don't fucking doubt any of it. I, dude, yeah, so. I don't doubt it either, but I fucking hate to think that. I hate to think that Coker would be involved in something like that. And it's like, I would you know hate what? to be think that too, but Coker might not have been involved in it. So I w- no, yeah, good point. And you know, I I would start. I'm starting to think that maybe Ken is involved in shit like that because. He's at the, the point of his can. career where fucking money is the fucking top priority, dude. People go and look at the fight. Look at Ken's record and go back and look at the fight between Ken Shamrock and just give me a minute to remember this guy's fucking name for fart's sake. He's the uh, he's he works with uh, one championship right now. He's like a big uh, you know one of a office guys, you know, ex- not an office guy, I mean, executive guy, you know what I mean? Damn it, man, why can't I remember his name? Rich Franklin. All right. When he fought Rich Franklin, I swear, he took a motherfucking dive in that fight. I don't give a shit yeah. what anybody says. It looks so fake to me. Yeah. And that was like, that was like... We're talking about, we're talking about Brian and I, you know, Brian, uh, uh, watching fucking fighting in general for up to, you know, 20 plus years now. You know, <laughs> You know, so we can kind of tell, you know, when things are a little fucking fishy, people. It looked like bullshit, man. I mean, if you go back and look for Rich Franklin versus Ken Shamrock, and if you could find that fight, look at that fight, because the world's most dangerous man looks like the world's most fake man. Really, I mean, it's ridiculous. He's 51 right now. He just fought. Yeah, they have it. They have it listed here. February nineteenth, Ken Shamrock versus Hoist Gracie. They have it list. They have it listed on my listing right here. So, okay, so it's not a fucking fake post. So it's, it must it's, not be. Uh, holy shit! What a pile of garbage. That was two thousand five. Yeah. It was ten years ago that he lost to Rich Franklin, dude. Yeah. People, look it up. It's April 9th, two thousand five. I think he took a mother friggin' dive in that fight. And um, and you know what? Let's, we've seen, let's, we've seen yeah. some other fights where it looks like he may have taken a dive. Let let. We're gonna move on from this, but the yeah, the no, reason agree, we put man. up we 
we brought it up. It's just because Bellator, yeah, they're going to have some badass fucking shows for us. Okay, we know that. But they're going to have this in-between shit where they're keeping everything relevant. We're, they're, they're bringing in old fans. But some of us fans, you know, current fans, have been watching these guys for fucking years. You know, we've been watching fucking UFC since it started. We've been watching boxing all the way back in, since the 80s. But you're having these guys come in for strictly strictly fanfare, dude. It's strictly, and we coined it the clown show. This is another example of a clown show, okay? I have more respect for a Hoist Gracie fighting a Sakuraba and Metamoris, okay? Yeah. Then I do have for a Hoist Gracie and a Ken Shamrock fighting in a Bellator. Because this right here, it's it's like you said, if you're going to do this kind of shit and you're going to have this select group of fighters fighting, this is like um, a veterans slash legends slash old timer slash senior citizen yeah, slash almost. newbie. Slash newbie. This dude yeah. fought two times before facing uh, yeah. Kevin Ferguson, yeah. which is Kembo. This it's Dafir Harris. He has two knockouts. Two two. He's two and zero with two knockouts. Okay, that's 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 magically delicious against Kevin Ferguson. But the last time he fought was 2011. That's fucking giving Kimbo a fucking guaranteed victory, so we can keep the Kimbo train going. Right is what I that mean, is. It's two... it's a guaranteed fucking victory. And the guy you guys are betting on it. Old. Got all your money on Kimbo. Yeah. And the guy, you know, Dada five thousand or whatever, you know, that's 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 him right there. That's the guy we've been talking about. Yeah. Or the guy, which, like I said, I thought it was a joke because the Dada five thousand, where he had a sledgehammer over his shoulder or whatever, and it just it just looked ridiculous. I thought it was totally. He's made another up. internet. He's he's got. I I think he's got fucking get um, like fucking street fights and shit like Kimbo had, like got the uh you know the yeah. street fights against people. You know, it's the internet sensation guy, which. You know, we're 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 having a Bellator match with guys that aren't really MMA fighters. They're in an MMA uh, sensation show. street fighter or, um, YouTube. Show. Guys. We got freak show, clown show guys going it's, on here, man. It's like <laughs> you're doing a discredit to MMA, Coker. I, I don't agree with this part of Bellator oh. that you're trying to promote. But I got with that say being I said, lost. I'm not going to sit here and fucking hate on it because it's going to happen. So it's right. like, yeah, I, I gotta say, I, I I'm losing a little bit of respect here, man. What yeah, the fuck is it is. And garbage. we were just we were just pubbing and and building up fucking Coker and some of the moves he was making, some of the shit he had coming up, and then this fucking shit gets released, and then we're scratching our heads, saying, yeah. you know, hey, between all the good shit you're having, you're having these this scratch your head fucking matches, clown shows. So it's, he yeah. took a dump on it, man. I don't get it. I, I don't understand it. It's, why, it's, why, it's why, why do that? Brian's fucking coin phrase, fart in an elevator match matches. <laughs> and, um, you know, yeah. Hey, we'll see what happens, but moving on, we got some stuff <laughs> brewing over here in UFC that is very worthwhile. Okay. Now, barring any injuries, you know, barring any, <laughs> we don't know. We're, We're talking about the upcoming cards. We're talking about an upcoming card here, but we're a week out, bro. We know what happens sometimes when we're a week, when we're a week out. Shit yeah. can go downhill real quick. But it is a stacked fucking card. Good prelims. We can't run down everything because, you know, due to time constraints, we're going to start off with a nice matchup here in the heavyweight division, bro. Stefan Struve, 30-7. Against a Jared Roll show coming in at thirteen and two, dude. We got fucking long fucking legged striker guy against fucking hardcore wrestling heavyweight. Who do you got? It's it's really hard to pick this one because Jared Roll show should be since you know since because he's a wrestler, all he really wants to do is take you down and, and ground and pound. But he does have some decent um, stand-up striking. But he got ended against a uh, the Russian guy, um, Olenek. You know, Alexei Olenek just yep. dropped this dude's ass and, and finished him. And since then, he's had a couple of fights where he kind of looked like he's a little tentative here. Um, 
Yeah, he beat Josh Copeland, TKO, whatever. Josh Copeland, I just think, that, I don't know. I don't know what that guy was up to, but yeah. I just think it's it's a – UFC just gave this dude a shot. I don't, I don't even know if he's going to fight in UFC again. but uh, And then beat Timothy Johnson, which, you know, you're talking about two virtual nobodies. Timothy Johnson and Josh Copeland are his last two fights. Now he's fighting Stefan Struve? I mean – he better damn well be afraid of a Stefan Struve because if Stefan Struve has any kind of a jab, which he probably doesn't, Stefan Struve, if he had any kind of a jab, he'd have been a fucking very successful fighter by now. But he does not have any kind of a great jab. But we don't know what he's been doing in his training. I would really like to see him get started with some shit like that. Get in there with a good striking coach. But straight up call, how would I call it? I mean, shit, man. I mean... If Stefan Struve hasn't, you know, brushed up on his takedown defense, yeah, he's going to yep. hit his back several times, in my opinion. But, you know, he's Rochelle's going to have to find his way in there because you're talking about a long-limbed yeah. ass, lanky ass dude, you know, yep. that if he's up that striking game a little bit, you're going to you're going to take you're going to suffer some nasty shots on your way in. But I don't know to call it. I, I'm going to say Stefan Struve, but that's if Stefan Struve doesn't have any. Uh, illnesses or any problems with doctors or passing out before shows or anything like that because we all know that still weighs in in the last year and a half two years yeah well you're saying Stefan Struve and I I'm looking at a Stefan Struve uh uh pedigree here I'm who's who he has fought and it's Minotaur and O'Gara which yeah you know Minotaur ass and career twilight of his career which I believe he's done. Yeah, I believe he yeah, already retired. Done. Yeah. He's done. That might have been the. I think that might have been the one that he uh, retired in. But um, you know, he's he's lost against Alistair Overheim, a Mark Hunt, a Stepe Miocic, a Levar Johnson, a Dave Herman, a Pat Barry. You know, he's won against those guys. Uh, the only two he's lost against, excuse me, is Mark Hunt and, and Alistair Overheim. But the thing I'm getting at is we're looking at all the people he's fought against. And the UFC has matched him against strikers. Okay? He's really never had to go against a guy who is basically a fucking wrestler. Okay? I think Stefan Struve is in trouble here, bro. Jerry Rolschult has squashed, you know, the striking and the ground and pound of a solo play. And yeah, solo play is retired. You know, um, other guys, he's... He's a superior wrestler when it gets down to it. And to me, like you said, I think he can cut through. Uh, if he's going to stand there and strike with a, a, a Stefan Struve, he's, he's fucking done, and he knows this. His only fucking chance is to get Stefan Struve down and ground and pound every time. That's it. That is his only purpose in this fight, is to get inside, take this long-legged motherfucker down, and ground and pound him. And Stefan Struve, great, dude. But you better get some separation because even if it's a close match and Jared Rolschultz is holding you against the fence and dirty boxing you, you're not very effective for the simple fact is you don't get a lot of generate a lot of power out of your long arms when shit's in tight like that. You're going to have to do some separation, maybe get some movie knees in and shit like that. I don't see that happen, dude. Jared Rolschultz, Imposing his weight and will in this one, taking a Stefan Struve against the cage, possibly down to the ground, and um, maybe not the most beautiful win, but a grind him out um, control win is what I would say. Decision, Jared Rolschold. Okay. Well, I I I like your your uh, assessment, and I I you know I. Uh... I agree to a lot of points, but how good is Jared Rolschult in uh, submission defense? Because True. Stefan Struve off his back is a pretty good submission artist. You know what I mean? If you look through his resume. He gets yeah. up in the guard, shit, you know, with those long legs. You're right. Shit could fucking get ugly. Submission arm bar, submission triangle choke. Oh. Submission, uh, let me see. Submission triangle choke, submission rear naked choke. Yep. So, I mean, you know. There's a bunch of other triangles, you know what I mean? These are different kind of guys, you know what I mean? If if uh, Rochelt's submission defense is, is uh, up to par, you know, it's cool. 
you know, because all it'll really do was pro- will probably get the fight stood stand stood yes. back up. Which... And Rochelle can do in continuous takedowns. Maybe he might find himself in the third round and fucking gassed out. Yeah. Or yeah. he could he Struve could also well. Struve may be as well gassed out. So I uh, you know Struve using you know some takedown defense or whatnot or and. Josh Rolschholt maybe not taking him down fully some of the time and just or working some of that weight against the cage. Or even Jared, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You said Josh. But yeah, <laughs> Josh Rolschholt and Jared Rolschholt. Yeah, I mean, they're all, brothers. All those guys. What the hell, you know. I mean, Jared, Josh, Jim, uh, Jacob, you know. John, Jacob, Jingleheimer, Schmitz, Rolschholt. Yep. Oh, sorry. But you know, uh, we'll see what happens in that yeah. one, bro. I like it. It's a cool matchup, dude, I think, really, because at this point, you know, it's been touch and go for a Struve right now with his, you know, his medical issues and stuff like that. So it's kind of, you know, it's got the, it's got people on that uh, on the fence about him a little bit when it comes to that. And Rochelt, it's like you're talking about it, like you said, man, a top wrestler, badass wrestler with yep. takedowns, yeah, badass wrestler in that division, and um, and good striking power. So hopefully he's not too tentative and giving too much rest or too much respect to Struve. Because he can probably do good things in this fight if he doesn't give too much respect. But I think before we go on, maybe a quick break here, man. A quick five. Yeah, that, we'll, that's, uh, that sounds like great, uh, great plan. And when we get back, Uriah Hall sitting at 13-5 and five coming off a big fucking huge victory against the Gagard Masasi, dude. And, uh, you know, hey, we got uh, Robert Whitaker sitting here. Just beat fucking Brad uh, Tavares before that, Clinton Hester, and a Mike Rhodes. So, you know, Uriah Hall, you got your work cut out for you. And we'll come back and we'll uh, talk about that fight. We'll be back, people. I think this fight, going into it, it's a good opportunity for a Robert Whitaker to basically put a put a stop, you know, put a big stop to a a, a freight train coming through, you know. And I uh, calling it's going to be really hard for me because raise up, his name up too. Because raise his name up too because he's sitting at fourteen. Are you talking about Uriah Hall? Said, no, you said Robert Whitaker. Yeah. That's a big chance for Robert Whitaker. I said raise his name up, too. He's sitting at a, a 14 right now in the middleweight division, you know, beating the Ray Araya Hall who's sitting at a 10. You know, right, fuck. right. And I had some guy on Facebook saying, no, man, Uriah Hall at 10. That doesn't make any sense. He should be ahead of uh, Gagarin. I'm like, dude, look at the body of work here, dude. Uriah Hall hasn't faced the same kind of guys yep. that Gagarin Masasi has. You can't just go ahead and throw him over top of Uriah Hall. And Hall's not head. only that, you've got yeah. other guys that are yeah, yeah. in the top nine that you're not going to move out, you know. Right. So. You're not just going to bowl in front of them. You, you, it's basically a dummy. I mean, you know, not yeah. not to you know, it's bag on people, but it's, it's a dummy approach to it. Just because, you know, Larry Thompson from out of Ohio that nobody knows about comes in and, and might beat a – uh, Stephen Thompson or something just for shits and grins doesn't mean he's just going to take Stephen Thompson's place just because especially when you 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 beat a bamboozy who had his first fucking fight in the fucking or second fight in the fucking UFC a, a nobody a relative nobody exactly and and you know. before that you lost so Brian's point is a, uh, is point on you know spot on yeah you can't just you can't base it on his last win you got to base it on his body of work mm-hmm. so just stop it but. Anyway, <laughs> I, I I like the matchup. I think it's a cool matchup because you got a Whitaker coming off of um, a decision win over Mike Rhodes, knockout over Hester, and a knockout over Brad Tavares, which Brad, Brad Tavares just won yeah. the other night. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Brad, Tavares, Brad Tavares is very good, man. Very good. Good fighter, dude. Yeah. Very good. Scored that win quickly, very quickly. So, and and Whitaker looks spot on with his striking. I mean, striking looks really good, man. He's good. He's a good submission guy as well. So Robert Whitaker, you, you, you could say a lot. Beating a Brad Tavares, who's a very good fighter, Brad Tavares made a mistake and got caught. So it's like a, a Gagar Masasi making a mistake and get caught. When you're dealing with fighters like this, who have a one punch, one kick, knockout ability. Oh shit! I'm thinking of a different Tavares. Excuse me. Oh, 
That was a t- Tavares. They just won yeah, over the yeah, weekend. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brad Tavares is a, is a good fucking fighter, though. Yeah. You don't want to take anything from Brad Tavares. You know, but uh, you know, Brad Tavares sitting at fucking 13 to 4. He's no fucking joke. So, uh, and I'm, I'm. No, I didn't fucking. I was thinking it. of Diego Tavares. Yeah. But I think it is what it is. But, you know. Uh, Blow. That was for you guys, man. Hope you dig that. Diego Tavares. I'm pretty sure that's who it is, but we'll see. No, he won. You know, Diego Tavares beat Clay Guida. Yeah, yeah, just the other night. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Diego Tavares. I, I confused him with Brad Tavares. So, my my bad. That's what I was getting at. Diego How Tavares is the guy that How just won. You but use him. <laughs> yeah, you son of a bit. No, but um. Yeah, so my bad. Yeah, he, he beat Brad Tavares, which is not Diego Tavares. So anyway, man, I, I derailed you, buddy. Sorry about that, man. I, did, I didn't mean to do that. but <laughs> No, but uh, like I was saying, you, you, you get uh, Uriah Hall beating Gar Masasi, you know, which, hey, we can all say if, if, if he wouldn't have caught him with that, things could have been different. Okay, yeah. but he did. So things aren't different. It's Uriah right. Hall sitting here at number 10 looking to move forward. You got you a Brad DeVar. You could talk about a nine times out of ten. You know, but No, you can't talk about that because it's not going to be nine times out of ten. So but you, Uriah Hall won that fucking fight. But yeah. is Robert Whitaker going to take the same approach? No, Robert, Robert Whitaker is going to fucking go after this dude. He's not going to wait around. Whitaker is, is is coming off of a uh, you know not the vest like a, like we said not the vest of uh, people but free fight fucking winning streak, and uh, they are both. If you want to see a fucking hands down fucking hands throwing uh, match, this is the match to tune into. Yeah, and and I think me personally, I think Uriah Hall has the edge in this one. Waiting for the shot, waiting to pick the shot. You might even see a fucking roundhouse because it's his fucking mo. Who knows? But Robert Robert, Robert Whitaker better fucking watch his shit in this one. I got Uriah Hall knockout. This fucking this one is not going the distance, dude. No, they're both knockout artists too. So I mean, I, I'm you know I'm gonna be the devil's advocate and say uh, say Robert Whitaker. Okay, you, you got know, knockout. Uh, I'm gonna have to say yeah because I don't know how he's gonna look in the later rounds. You know, I really don't know how either one of these guys are gonna look in the later. Rounds. They're probably gonna look pretty fresh in the later rounds, in my opinion. It just depends on what happens. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Robert Whitaker, in my opinion, I just think the guy looks really good. He's come off a couple of good wins. He's he's he hasn't been out for a real long time. I shouldn't I shouldn't say that because it's he's about uh, well about five five months out. May 10th is his last fight. But this is a good step up for him. And it's like, I think at the same same time, being a good step up for a uh, Robert Whitaker, it's also people we can't be fooled by Uriah Hall because Uriah Hall had a perfect game plan on a guy that I think has been very stale mm-hmm. at coming out and fucking showing up and taking the fight to people. And I'm talking about Agar Masasi. I'm not bagging on Agar Masasi. I love the guy, man. But there's certain shit that I think that he's just not doing. You know, he's not, I don't want to say he's not improving, but he's not going for it. He could have went for it and probably beat the living hell out of Uriah Hall, but he just didn't. He waited around to see what what Uriah Hall was going to do and what that do to him. That costed him seriously. It costed him a serious back step. You're losing to a guy that's not even ranked. And you're ranked number four, or whatever it was. Was he ranked number five or six, maybe somewhere, somewhere in that area? But he loses to a guy that's not even ranked, so it did a, it did a major disservice to his career. And we called it. I know I I know I in part called it. And I was like, you know, if we don't see him light some shit up, something bad can happen. You know, Uriah Hall can get in here and fucking do some shit. And sure enough. He totally caught Gagar Masasi, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm pissed about this because I know Gagar Masasi is better than this. And that's what pissed me off so bad about this fight. And that's why it's like, you know what, I'm sorry. Uriah Hall is a great fucking fighter, don't get me wrong. But we've seen this guy's knockdowns, his fallbacks, his shortcomings. We've seen them. You know, and uh, same with Robert Whitaker. I'm not going to go out and say he's a perfect fucking fighter. But at the same time, 
this is a great matchup. I mean, I think these guys are neck and neck, man. I really do. Mm-hmm. Robert Whitaker is it's, giving it's up gonna, a little it's bit. It's going to be the first mistake, dude. It's going to be the it's going to be a mistake match, or whoever makes the first mistake is probably going to get knocked the fuck out. It's probably a great way to look at it. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, Robert Whitaker is going to be giving up some reach. We can already account yeah. on that. But we got we also have five eleven versus six oh, six six foot. So there's really not that much difference, really, when you look at it. I thought Robert Whitaker was a lot shorter, but he's not. He's five eleven. Uriah Hall six oh six six and They're going to be meeting in the middle six. of the cage, and there's going to be some bombs being thrown. I think so. it could be a good fight, man. Really good fight, possibly fight of the card, in my opinion. Whitaker, Whitaker's not known for getting knocked the fuck out. He's got he's been knocked out once in fourteen of four career. He's been knocked out once, decision twice. He's been submitted once. Uriah Hall's not going to be bringing any submissions. So Uriah Hall better even better better bring a top game to take him through the entire fight or knock this guy out. So it's going to be one really to watch for. Once, but so. uh, it's going to be good, uh, man. It's going to be really good. Yeah. And another sorry, knockout man, fight. A little passionate about it. <laughs> yeah, man, it's going to be a good fight. And another knockout fight that we're probably going to be passionate about is fucking seeing Mark Hunt, you know, sitting at number eight, trying to fucking scrap his way back up to the top and get another shot, which is probably going to take him three. Maybe four fights in this division. Who knows? Mark Hunt's got a little bit to go, in, you know, because he did it to himself. He didn't win the fights he was supposed to win. And this right here is going to be a redemption fight, dude. This is going to be a fight for him to prove once and all for all that Antonio Silva is not didn't deserve to win the first fight. Not only that, but he he's going to destroy him and prove that Mark Hunt is probably going to. Work his way back up to him, maybe a top five, dude. Antonio Silva is fucking done, and I see Mark Hunt knocking Antonio Silva out and wanting his, getting his fucking revenge. And we can see Mark Hunt climbing the ladder once again. He's not done. He's older. He's got to be in his 40s now. Um, You know, so, yeah, this is... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. For, for Mark Hunt, you yeah, kill one, off two, three, four more fucking fights by 2000, end of 2016, early 2017, you might be in position again, dude. But this is the first step, man. Get rid of this guy. Get him out of your hair. Redemption. And we can see Mark Hunt climbing the ladder again. Yeah, for Brie Silverdoom, Steve Amiosis for his last two fights. So you know damn well. By that looks of it right there, he's been in with the top dogs. You know, before that, knocking on a Roy Nelson. Always, yeah. Before that, making Roy Nelson fucking face plant. Nobody's ever done that. So, I mean, you know, looking at it, it's like Antonio Silva taking out Sol Paley for his last fight. I thought Antonio Silva looked good. But it just also proved to me that Sol Paley, yeah. not, not taking shit away from the guy, he just wasn't he wasn't up to par. You know, I it, it wasn't like UFC a, caliber. Yeah, it wasn't a top caliber dude. You know, also also a, a guy that's up there in age too, man. I, I don't want to yeah. completely shit on the guy. Age thirty seven, twenty two and five. Great career, man. Awesome career. The guy uh, retired recently too. So yeah. and it was um it, it was unfortunate, but like you said, it's. He's seen, and it, maybe it was him saying, "Hey, I, I just want to be with the UFC. I want to retire with the UFC. You know, I've done what I can do. You know, you're in a division that's a f- fucking hardcore division. Yeah, you're talking and, about bombs are flying with every one of these like, guys, man. I mean, yeah, it's like, come on, you, you're going to have to be really dedicated to, to, to carry on in that division. And I got to give some props too. Yeah. Out of uh, six fights in the UFC, he's like he's four and two. Four two in the UFC and he, and he ducks out. I don't. I'm not going to take that much away from him, dude. The guys, the guys done well. Family um, man, you know, you're living over there and uh, you know it's good weather. Fucking enjoy it, man. You, yeah, you, hell yeah. You had a, a good fan base. You did well in the UFC. Hats off, Saul Pulele. But 37 year old, 37 years old, man, get out while you still can. You know what I mean? Because a lot of guys are retiring right now because of this whole concussion bullshit. This concussion shit is, and it's serious. Don't get me wrong, people. It's serious. But a lot of guys are getting out because of the concussion thing. Concussion and slash 
not, not making enough yeah, injuries and not yeah. making enough money. Yeah, so, exactly. It's and it's, like, you know what? How many retirements we had like in the last month? What does that tell you about the whole the whole fighter pay, fighter pay thing with UFC going on? I got to is it is it is it me fighting or is it me taking care of my family financially? Yeah. Or is it me fighting or me taking care of UFC? Sorry man, it's about me. You know, I, anybody retiring right now, it's like I don't fucking blame you one bit, man, you know. And so, with their with their cuts and downsizing and then fire fighters uh retiring, you know, they're 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 trimming the fat, and they're only giving the money to the fucking the the big fucking name guys, and yeah. everybody else is just surviving. So yeah. it's like, hey. Yeah, with that being said, too, man, look at it this way, man. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm not a huge. I, I'm a good fan, I would say, of a uh, Misha Tate, but she's come out. She's made some stink about you know Ronda Rousey making. Mm-hmm. making uh, seven figures, six figures, you know, in UFC. And she's like, where am I? I'm not making even close to six figures. What is this? I've been a number two fighter for the longest time. She's making millions. I'm making pennies on the dollar here. What is this? So mm-hmm. that's it's the exact truth. She's it's, making it's... she's making shit money with the company that she's been for with a long time. But, but, but long every, time. everybody, the thing is, everybody... All these fighters and everybody seen it coming, and I know you're concentrating a fighter and fighting, or you know you're tra- concentrating a training camp, fighting and all this, and you're not seeing all this coming. But it was the storm was coming, man. The storm was coming, and now everybody's throat gets cut. And the like I said, the best fighters and the most popular fighters are getting paid, and you know you're some of these fighters are looking on the standing on the outside looking in. And it's, hey, and uh, we've said it before, if you don't unite and fucking rise up against it with a union, you're going to have to eat the shit that you are served. And that's, hence, retirements, fighters at the end of their contract leaving, a la Phil Davis and some other fighters, for maybe possibly greener pastures. So, you know, hey. This is a fucking two thousand sixteen is gonna be an interesting time for the UFC and their Reebok contract dude with some of these fighters. So it really is because it's proving that everybody's you know, Dana's like, Oh, you know, when it's all said and done, everything's mm-hmm. gonna be great, you know, it's gonna be a- blowing smoke up yeah. everybody's channel. Yeah, really, yeah. It's like really, dude, really? Why are the fighters leaving then? Or or retiring or you know what I mean? Because it's just it's it's just it's top huge Pyramid company scheme bullshit, man. And if you know people say, "Oh, pyram- people are so programmed to believe," oh no, it's a pyramid scheme. You know, it- sorry, dude, UFC is a fucking pyramid scheme. Yeah, who's making the all pine, the money? The Ponzi the, scheme. Yeah, the biggest guy at the top is making all the money, and then all the guys underneath they're not yeah. making shit. So they- yeah, if you're not second to first here, you're making poop schnickens, poop schnickities. So. It's but, just, uh, you know, yeah. that being said, fucking moving on to a, a title, the co-main event title match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, against yeah. Valerie Letourneau. You know, uh, I like, hey, man. She's done really good, but yeah. this is a fucking giant test tonight. Yeah. I think it's just a – this is going to be another uh, – just clean out the division here when we don't even have a division yet. Yeah, so, exactly, and it's going to be – The J Tech should be fighting not... fucking once every year and a half with the, the, the shallow division yeah. she's in. And, and Letourneau coming in, you know, you know, and we've already heard rumblings out of uh, – um, What's-her-face's little blonde girl. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. Love, Paige Van Zandt, yeah. Paige Van Zandt camp saying she's ready to fight Joanna. But Joanna, right. I think, is going to come in here and pose the same will as she's always done, and that's the superior fucking striking. If you're superior not going to be able to... down defense. You Nobody's going to take her fucking down. I mean, not you know. anytime soon. Yeah. If they do, okay, you hold it off for the, for the ending of the round. Yep. It's going to take you a long time to get it there, so you hold it down, hold her down for whatever... A minute or forty-five seconds or whatever. Okay, that's, that might get you the win of that round. And but then, then you got to do it again in the second round. I mean, just and then not only factors. that, you're talking about you're in this bitch for fucking five rounds. That's not gonna fucking. That's not gonna go 
past two, two and a half rounds before you're totally fucking exhausted about trying to take down somebody else's body weight. Well, you know what Letourneau said? She said, I'm a, I'm a more of a striker fighter, and she's more of a striker fighter, so this is the kind of fight I like. <laughs> I'm not sure how much she's going to like this fight no. when, it, when it's all said and done. Not when the jabs. You're talking, about, you're talking about one of the most vicious motherfuckers in the game. Yeah. You're talking about jabs and everything else coming at your face. Kind Ronda of... Rousey is pretty vicious. But Ronda Rousey is, is second tier compared to this chick in striking. Yeah. You're talking about like a six, seven-time Muay Thai champion yeah. in, a, in a Johanna. Yeah. I'm sorry. This chick is Johanna top Johanna is going to fucking ruin face. So she's done it before. Face ruined. Laterno done. Third round, give up. I mean, if you look at this, I'm thinking second round. Mid-second round, it's over, man. But if you look at it this way, you got Johanna. JJ, chick. No. (laughs) I'm sorry. I always say it that way just because it's uh, it's the way uh, Goldie says it. They call her Johanna champion. She said she was cool with that, so everybody calls her that. But uh, 10-0, and before this... People, she was like a, a a six, like I said, six six or seven time Muay Thai champion, and she just annihilated people. And they're coming over here. It's like a whole field of people that have no idea what she's doing. And that and that being said, what you're saying, Paige Van Sant being good and all that and showing what she can do, she might have a fucking problem against Joanna too. She's going to be biting off a little bit more than she can chew calling her out. UFC putting her up, pinning her up against Johanna right now, dumb idea. Because mm. there's so much more money to be made. If if uh, Letourneau loses, which I'm going ahead I'm going ahead and betting on it, if Letourneau fucking turns this into a serious battle, awesome, man. More power to her. This is awesome. It's great. But if they do the same deal that they do with johanna that they do with ronda rousey then Paige Van Zandt will never fight a letourneau she'll never fight the last person that johanna beat she'll never fight the person before that either she'll go straight to the title shot like they're doing with holly holm so pff, ufc is really starting to look like in my opinion a bunch of bullshit with these these title matchups with okay let's give the person that's fought none of these people that ronda have beat so you can't so you can't discredit her. Let's give her the title shot because you can't discredit her because she hasn't fought any of the fight any, any of the people that Ronda's fought. Nobody wants to see her fight all these people that Ronda already beat. It's like why not, dickhead? What are you talking about? I've heard people say shit like that. Well, people don't want to see Holly Holm fight uh, Misha Tate because she already lost to the champion. Dude, you want to see her beat somebody that Ronda's beat? in order to earn herself the, the, the title shot. Are you kidding? So that's what that's the shit that, that irritates me about title shots that UFC has been doing lately. You know, same, you know, just like, you know, and this is way off track, and I'm only going to make it a second here, but it's uh, for BCO Verdum having to fight Cain Velasquez again. He beat the living hell out of this guy. There's no reason why he should have to rematch uh, Cain Velasquez again. It's bullshit. It's UFC bullshit is why he has to face him again. I, I'm sorry, people. I'm just I'm so sick of UFC's crap when it comes to this kind of shit. Even though there's great matchups, there's great fights, and when you when it comes down to it, yeah, it is top notch. But with a top notch game like this, and knowing we're the best guys in the town or whatever, we're the, we're the top dogs. They could pull this kind of bullshit that they're not going to fool me on this. So, and that's just, that's all I wanted to say about it, man. I, sorry about the hijacking there, dude. But <laughs> No, that's cool. But um, that Tired being said, we're going to go over to the main event before we duck out of here, and that's Ronda Rousey, um, 12-0. and 0. <sighs> Went against a 9-0 and 0 Holly Holm, which... Check this out, man. <gasps> Yep, Holly Holm, you are the last victim before the vacation. Before the no one fault of year. hers either. No fault of hers. No, it's not because Jeez. I've said it before. This fight was originally slated for 
like New Year's or something like that, Ronda Rousey and her people, I think, came in and said, we need to get this moved up closer. Step it up closer so I can get this movie. So I can get the fuck out of here, get my movies in, take off fucking 8, 10, 12 months, and be back the end of next year, the beginning of the year after that. Hey, be booking bitch, but Ronda Rousey's deserved it. She stepped up. She's fucking taken out all comers. Holly Holmes, love you, girl. Love your story, but you're just another victim. There's no way. Ronda Rousey, fucking first, second round submission. She's taking this chick out. She's going to, uh, you know what, first round. She's taking Holly Holmes out first round. She's going to get her on the ground, fucking wreck her ass. And I know Holly Holm wants to keep this bitch standing up. That's Holly Holm. But Ronda Rousey, probably going to do a little, you know, fainting, you know, standing up, playing games. But when it's all said and done, she's going to get it to the ground. You're done, girl. You know, and Misha Tate getting passed over and not getting the title shot, I understand it. I get what they're going with it. Is it fair? No, it's not fair. Because she earned the title shot. They said she would get the title shot, but she still didn't get it. And then... Unbeknownst to her, even. So Holly Holm coming into this, I got to think Holly Holm is a little bit smarter than to think that, oh, Rhonda's going to stand and strike with me the entire time. No, she's not going to. So Holly Holm better have a crash course of every fucking game you can have in the last three months, every single game you can have in an MMA fight in the last three months. The biggest crash course you will ever see for somebody to learn if Holly Holm comes in here with a, a stand-up striker's game plan, she's the biggest dumbass there ever has been. I'm sorry, man. She's got to be well-versed on her back, too, because she's going to be on her back. She's got to be well, well-versed in the top game, too, because Ronda Rousey's going to submit her off her back, too, you know, off, off Ronda's back, too. She's got to be well-versed everywhere, and she's not. So, And you can't learn it in a matter of a couple months. You can learn a lot. You can't learn enough. This chick is virtually a striker fighter with limited ground skills, and it's it's by plan. It's a UFC plan to... She's 9-1, okay? So she'll come back. They'll have her come back and win, like, three fights in a row. So she'll look dazzling. And if Ronda Rousey, you know, retires in the next two, three years or whatever, Holly Holm will be the new, oh, we can make all this money off this girl, too, because she's only lost once. Oh, my gosh! Raleigh Holm versus Misha Tate. You know what I'm saying? It's all just a big bunch of bullshit. It's matchups that really don't make sense up to this point, in my opinion. They might make more sense later on when this fight is over with. They'll make more sense later on. But Holly, they never gave Holly Holm any any chance to learn anything. You're to learn a, a complete ground defense, takedown defense. Well, she's already got decent takedown defense. I'm not going to take that away from her. She's got decent takedown defense. We've already seen it. But... I'm not even going to get. I'm not even going to say her striking uh, prowess is is going to be that great against a Rousey because Rousey's so second nature when it comes to judo. She's just going to. Oh yeah, I took a couple of your shots and I, I you're on your back now. So big deal. What big deal? What are you going to do off your back? Holly Holm has a whole new fucking game to learn in order to even show up to this fight, and it's a week away. We haven't even been talking about Ronda Rousey versus Holly Holm for very long now, and. This chick, like I said, man, she's got a life term of skill, lifetime of skills to learn in order to win this fight. I just, it's the deck is so far stacked against her, and I, and it's, I don't blame her for taking this fight. This is a fight of a lifetime, but that's the thing. She's got to run with like some very special skills, like whatever you're good at on the ground, go with that. You're really good with arm bars. You catch Ronda Rousey in an arm bar. You look really good in arm bars. Let's go with that. You look really good with a, uh, you know, whatever your best uh, stand-up skill is going to be. Go with that. That's going to be the uh, pocket, in the pocket uh, strike against Ronda Rousey. Go with everything that's going to look bad against Ronda, or look good, excuse me, look bad for Ronda Rousey. I mean, there's a lot of shit that she has to learn in such a small amount of time. There has to be like a few solid, really, really solid moves that she could pull off in this fight if they go that that route in my opinion it's 
the deck is so far stacked against Holly Holm, I just don't even see why this match was even made. But we all know why it's made. Because Ronda Rousey wants to get back into movies. She wants to basically clear out the, the division, so to speak, and get to movies, take some time off, get to movies, go home and settle down, Mom, you know, and stop stop being mad at my coach, Mom. You know, stop, you settle down, Mom. She's got to have time to go home and settle down, Mom, because Mom's all pissed off about some shit. But, but anyway, man, I, I sorry I ran it again, man, but it's, that's the way I feel about it. Way too far stacked against the Holly Holm to ever, ever even come close in this fight. Well, let's see what happens, people. Until that time, thanks for tuning in and a steadfast. You got fear. All right, people, thanks for tuning in, man. It was a blast. Don't forget to check us out, uh, MMA Aftermath on Facebook, MMA Aftermath on Twitter, also Illegal Elbow on Twitter. And uh, head on over to IllegalElbow.com, check out the top 20 heavyweight list and the heavyweight forecast and all the extras and new stuff that Brian's been putting on. That's IllegalElbow.com, people.